Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. It's been a little while, but I am back with another video in my Hero Quest restoration project series. Today, doing something really quick and easy, I'm going to restore the torture rack. As with most of the other furniture elements in the game, the torture rack comprises a cardboard element and a plastic element. And we are going to look at cleaning up, restoring and painting both pieces. Fortunately, my torture rack is in pretty good condition, so this is a nice quick job to do. As you can see, there is some paint that uh, will need to be redone. There are some nubs to clean up and the folded piece of card doesn't quite join up. But the folds themselves on the cardboard are good and the cardboard is actually in decent shape. So I'm not going to worry about pressing and refolding that card like I have on some of the other furniture elements. So of course I'm going to start by disassembling the piece. And then I've got some PVA glue here and I'm going to run that down the card where the two ends meet up. And then to hold that in place, I'm going to use a couple of elastic bands. You don't want to use really strong elastic bands here that are going to dent or damage the card. But of course, you don't want to use really weak elastic bands that aren't going to hold it well. And once I'm happy with the way that the pieces are meeting up, I'm going to apply some PVA glue to all of the exposed edges of the card. The reason I'm doing that is going to stop moisture getting inside the card. It's also going to strengthen up those edges to prevent any creasing or dings that may happen in the future. While that PVA is drying, I'm going to paint the rack itself. I'm actually going to take the arms off of the rack, but you don't actually really need to do that. I'm now using my side cutters and I'm just going to snip off those nubs that weren't cleaned off properly by the previous owner of this game. And then after clipping those nubs, I will get a mold line remover and I will just run that at a 45 degree angle along those nubs and anywhere else where there are any obvious mold lines. I've then spray undercoated with Chaos Black and we are going to put two coats of Morn Fang Brown over all these brown elements. As I mentioned before, you can actually paint this with the arms attached and you won't get as much paint over your fingers as I did here. Morn Fang Brown is a nice rich dark brown color which is really good for this sort of thing, but it will need two coats to get good coverage. And as you can see, I'm not worrying about painting over the shackles or the ropes or anything else at this moment. Those details will be picked out later on. For now, I just wanna get brown over the whole thing. And as with all of my furniture elements, I'm not going to be doing a really detailed paint job on this. I'm just getting it done as quickly as possible to a standard that looks decent on the tabletop. And when those two coats of Moran Fang are dry, I'm switching to Zandri Dust and I'm going to use Zandri Dust slightly thinned down to pick out the ropes on the piece. And this will require two thin coats as well. Of course, you need to be careful not to get it over the brown that you've already painted. And by the way, that hole that you can see in the top of the rack, that is where a skull or a rat will be placed. I've already painted all of my skull elements in a previous video. I'm now switching to lead belcher and the lead belcher is obviously going to be used to pick out the metal elements, which are the shackles. You may need two coats. Sometimes you can get away with one coat with lead belcher. It covers pretty well. And after picking out these metal elements, you're nearly done really in terms of actually painting this piece. It's a very quick and simple job. When it's completely dry, I'm going to do a coat of Agrax Earthshade. I've thinned the Agrax down just a little bit and I'm going to do a coating over the whole thing. It's gonna go over the metal, it's gonna go over the ropes, it's gonna bring out all the detail, it's gonna knock down the colors, it's gonna make the metal look a little bit rusty and dirty, it's gonna make the ropes look older. It's gonna bring out the definition on the wood. It's gonna do everything that I'm too lazy to do myself. And in fact, when this Agrax is completely dry, I'm not going to do any more painting for this piece. You can, if you want to, go back in, dry brush the wood with a lighter wood color, pick out the metal elements to make them a little bit brighter again, go back over the ropes. But when the Agrax was completely dry on this piece, I was more than happy that it looked good enough to go into my dank, dark Hero Quest dungeon. And while the Agrax was drying, it was time to finish off the cardboard element. The PVA is dried at this point, so it is a complete sealed piece. 
but you can see where the two ends meet there is some obvious cardboard and we're just going to put a little bit of paint on that to hide that join. I'm starting with Balor Brown here and I'm just going to apply that to continue that wood grain effect around the edge. And it's not an exact match but there's such a small amount of it it's really not going to show that much. And then I'm going to switch to Screaming Skull and I'm going to do the same thing to match up the other areas of the edging. If you want to be more precise, you can mix colors, try and get a much better color match. But for me, this was easily good enough to hide that join and make the whole thing look a little bit nicer and more finished. You can, if you want, paint the underside of the cardboard, but you're really not going to see that when it's in play anyway. And that's it, completely finished. You can see here the before and after photographs, and I have now added a little skull to the top of the rack to finish it off. As I said at the top of the video, this was a very quick and easy one, not a lot of effort, and I think it looks so much better than it did before. If you're restoring a rack for your own copy of Hero Quest and it's in much worse shape than mine, you may want to look at some of my other restoration videos where I have dealt with other Hero Quest elements that were in much worse condition. But for this video, that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.